Good morning, my name is Caleb Weigel, and I'm the author of the Myrtle Beach Mystery Series. On May the 9th, I am thrilled to bring you the fourth entry in the series, Death on the Causeway, where it picks up on Clark Thomas' adventures around the Grand Strand as he tries to figure out who might have murdered his wife. Spoiler if you haven't read the first book. Anyway, so in, in this book, it's, it's centered on the restaurant industry in Myrtle Beach, which as for, which as, if you're fans of Myrtle Beach, you know there are 2,000 restaurants here. You, you can go for years. To different restaurants every day and not eat the same one so it's fun it's fun to discover the different restaurants in the area and so in this book it's centered, it's centered on um, a couple of food bloggers who have traveled the country for the past year in a, in a camper van they're a young mid-20s couple they're engaged and they've traveled the country starting from Louisiana and Myrtle Beach was set to be their last last stop on this year-long journey well at the beginning of this book Clark Thomas is driving through Conway during Memorial Day weekend traffic on a Saturday and he pulls up at a stoplight and he sees a he sees the woman the, the girl in this book um, she's in a mobile home parking lot and she's screaming into her phone and how about I just read you the first chapter how about that that way maybe you'll get a feeling of what's going on better than me blabbering on which is normal that's my wife so chapter one Life has its habit of changing when you least expect it, and on this most normal days, it happened again. Months had passed with no sign of Autumn's phone. Life had gone on, it had to, I had no choice. As much as I would have liked to throw all my responsibilities aside and get to the bottom of Autumn's death, I couldn't. People depended on me. My first solo book was released by my publisher in early February, and soon I was getting invited to book signings and speaking engagements. The book went over well with readers better than expected. They were already asking when the next book in the series was going to be released. I had a few ideas knocking around the inside of my head and scrawled on napkins from the bookstore. To this point, I hadn't written the first word of the next book, maybe after Memorial Day. Currently, I was stuck in Molasses Slow Memorial Day weekend traffic moving through Conway on 501. The unofficial start of summer brought tourists from all over the country to the Grand Strand, happy to get away from their home after months of being pent up in their houses for the winter and spring. With the weather warming and kids getting out of school, families were eager to spend three days in the Grand Strand. Many of them did not know where they were going, even with GPS, and it caused headaches for us locals, not to mention the authorities. The police and fire department spent a large amount of time and resources cleaning up after fender benders. Conway was a choke point for much of the traffic flowing into town. I was on my way home from an author event for the library in Marion, sitting at a stoplight. I'd met some new readers, signed a few books, and enjoyed a chase, tasteful char charcuterie spread. It had been a good day, but I was looking forward to getting home. My plan was to grab a chicken biscuit from a Bojangles on 544 on the way back to my home in Surfside Beach. I didn't feel like getting home, lugging cases of books back inside my house, and then making dinner. It was days like this when I missed Autumn. If one of us was going to get home late, the other had made sure dinner was waiting. I had wound up doing most of the cooking, but it had been my pleasure. I liked to cook, and she'd worked hard at her job. She had received a small inheritance from a rich uncle that enabled us to open Myrtle Beach Reads together. I managed the bookstore while she kept her job at the courthouse. Her intention had been to do that until the store made enough money to where she could cut back on the number of hours she would work and eventually quit. She never made it to that goal. It's been three years since her death. One year since Detective Gomez told me her suspicion that Autumn might have been murdered rather than having died of a heart attack at her desk at the courthouse. My life has changed in several ways since that night. That night, the night I, your average everyday bookstore owner and coffee slinger Clark Thomas, solved the murder of Paige Whitaker, the first of four murders I'd solved. <coughs> Excuse me. Since then, I tried to figure out if Autumn had been murdered, and if so, who might have done it and how. I had come across her phone on my desk, charged it, and found several threatening text messages from an unknown number. Gomez had a tech person who could try to get more from the phone. I would handed her the phone and never saw it again. Someone had stolen it from the forensics lab. Gomez said the tech had put the phone in a tray and placed it into an evidence cabinet. The tech hadn't told anyone about the phone. I had thanked Gomez for helping and she said she would let me know if she learned anything further. That was eight months ago. Haven't heard a peep. Only four people knew about the phone, myself, the tech, Gomez, and her partner, Detective Moody. Its theft kept me up late ever since, racking my brain trying to figure out who would steal the phone and how they could have known about it. 
The mystery behind the person who sent Autumn the threatening messages continued. My jeep rolled to a stop at another light. This was one of those days where I hit every light, hurry up and stop. Traffic was bumper to bumper as was typical in Conway this time of year. The temperature on the dash approached 90 while the sun in the rear view fell to the horizon. I cranked the AC to high. I tapped my thumbs on the steering wheel to a Pearl Jam song I listened to as a teen, now on the classic rock station. That made me feel old. It wasn't the first time I've heard some of my favorite music growing up on 104.1. Part of life, I guess. At least they considered it a classic and didn't confine the song to the trash can. To my left was a family in a minivan. The windows in the back were tinted, but I saw several shadows moving about. The mom was in the front passenger seat, head back, staring at a cell phone. The dad's head poked forward, trying to see the street, the street signs, making sure they were on the right track. To my right was a mobile home sales lot. Several double bobs in various configurations dotted the lot. The small sales office in the center had a closed sign on the door. Two mobile homes sat side by side on this end of the lot with the ends of the houses facing the road. There was perhaps seven feet of space separating the two homes. In between, halfway down their length, was a petite blonde haired woman. I might not have looked twice except for two things. One, she looked like a California girl in a Carolina town. Two, she stomped her heels into the gravel lot as she screamed into her cell phone. And she would change my life again. So that is chapter one. And it's the start of a different type of Myrtle Beach mystery where it's not so much of a whodunit as a how done it, as they're trying to figure out what her fiance is up to. And inevitably, of course, you know, it's a murder mystery, so bodies will pop up somewhere along the way. Um, so I hope you enjoy the book as much as I enjoyed writing it and telling the story about Clark and continuing the series. I will be, I have several events lined up to, to celebrate the re release of the book, including. So the book comes out on May the 9th. On May the 7th, I'm doing a, I'm doing a pre-launch party at the Back Again Bookshop in Myrtle Beach uh, at 3 o'clock where people can get advanced copies of the book. I'm going to give away some things, including 10 pairs of two tickets to a Myrtle Beach Pelicans baseball game on May the 14th where you'll have an opportunity to hang out with me and my family and the family of the bookstore that owns the bookstore. Um, you can get on my website and go to the go to the to the main page and you can find where you can get pre-order a copy of Death, Death on the Causeway or spend twenty dollars at Back Again Bookshop to be entered in for a chance to win. And then two days after that on the actual release day, I'm gonna be at Bookends in North Myrtle Beach from from eleven to one, I think. You can check my events page. Um, I'll be there from eleven to one. Then that Saturday I will be in at Barnes and Noble and Market Common from 12 to 4, signing copies of the book. And on that Thursday, I'm going to Shira for an author talk and book signing. Um, tickets are not yet made available for that, but I will let you know when they are. And I will have, I'm working on some other things too. So please, I hope you enjoy the book and have a great weekend.